Betty in here or not. I guess they'll just miss out. So. Here are my top seven games. I probably got cheap on sale or something in 2015. And um, there's no particular order. And some of these games probably didn't even come out in 2015. In fact, I know at least two of them didn't. And uh, one of them hasn't come out yet officially, so. But that's not the point. These are games I've played, and I got cheaper, so. And... Top seven games I probably got cheap on sale or something in 2015. Okay. <clears throat> the first one, and the one that I've been playing a whole heck of a lot lately, is The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. And I got the, I got the original one uh, several years ago in, I think, a Humble Bundle sale uh, for dirt cheap. And I gave it a try for a few minutes, and I couldn't figure it out, and I didn't understand it, and it just sat around collecting dust. But then I kept hearing about how great it was, mainly on uh, Jim Sterling's uh, channel, about how fantastic uh, Binding of Isaac uh, was. So I gave it another shot, and I really liked it. And then I um, found out about Rebirth, and finally got around to getting it, and I love it. I've become addicted to it. It's endlessly replayable. Uh, it's got, I don't know, 200 and something, 250 something achievements on Steam. Uh, tons of stuff to unlock and characters to unlock, and it's just a fantastic game and it's even better once you get a working controller which I didn't have a proper controller until Christmas so <laughs> but now I have an Xbox 360 controller oh and I play this on Linux too so and it works great so yeah if you want something that just you can replay over and over and over again and get a new experience every time and requires some skill and a whole lot of luck, then you should try The Binding of Isaac Rebirth because it is a great, great game. Also, it looks really great, too. Um, the new version that they created, Rebirth, uh, looks really good, has a lot more animations, the sound quality is way better, has a new soundtrack, new graphics, and a new engine, a new game engine that runs fantastically. The old version was done in Flash and it run and ran really, really poorly. So, yeah, give it a try, it's very cool. My next game is another game that didn't come out in 2015, but I got it in 2015, and I like it. And that's Defense Grid The Awakening. This is an old game, 2008, I believe, and it still looks really good. I'm not really big into um, real-time strategy. Well, this is not real-time strategy. It's a tower defense game, but it's real-time. And um, I guess it's a real-time strategy game of sorts. And I'm not I've never really played tower defense games, and I heard this was probably one of the best ones. And it was cheap, and so I got it, and I played it, and I like it. Actually, I'm not even sure I bought it in 2015, to be honest, but I played in 2015, so there you go. It's a cool game. It's cheap. It runs fantastic on any machine made within the last several years so that's a good one to pick up oh and there's even some DLC for it and and then Defense Grid 2 uh, is supposed to be pretty good as well but I haven't played that so yeah good game 
with really good uh really good uh voice work voice acting as well and there's a story going on there um but um I haven't actually finished the game, so I couldn't tell you what it's about. <laughs> but it's a good game. All right, next game is Limbo. This is a great game. It really, really blew me away. It was frustrating. It was difficult. Um, and especially it was because before I had my uh, controller. Uh, now that I have my controller, I think I'm going to have to play it again, but this is a really, really good game. It looks fantastic. It's it's eerie. It's disturbing. And I, it's just it's got one of the best, like, atmospheric, like, atmospheres and ambience of any game I've ever played. It looks like grainy, a grainy film thing going on. Even the... Um, title screen looks like an old um, old film so it's hard to describe it's a puzzle game um, puzzle platformer I wouldn't say the platforming is fantastic because uh, it's not uh, the puzzles are pr- those are they're pretty good I don't, like again it's just it's the whole it's kind of more than the sum of its parts. It all comes together really well. Um, so, yeah, I would... I highly recommend it. It's it's just... It's creepy, it's weird, and I don't even know what it's about, to be honest. I don't know if the kid's supposed to be dead or what. He seems to be looking for another little girl. I don't know if it's a sister. It's not really... It really is open to interpretation, the whole thing. Um, it's got this Lord of the Flies thing going on, but then there are like giant weird spider monsters and it's just strange, strange game. And it's really beautiful and eerie and you should play it. So, all right, next is Downwell. And I, uh, got a GIF off of the website. So you can really see uh, how frantic and insane this game is. This is a roguelike too, uh, like Binding of Isaac. Well, no, not at all like Binding of Isaac, but it is a roguelike. So it, it, you know, procedurally generates levels every time you play it. So everything's new every time. But this is way more fast-paced, way more frantic and insane. And... um, I haven't got to play as much lately because I've been on Linux mostly uh, doing graphics. I do have it on running on Mac with Wine. I don't have it on Wine with Linux because this version of Linux does not can't run Wine because there's some sort of incompatibility um, with uh, the NVIDIA drivers, and I'm not gonna like screw up my NVIDIA drivers to install Wine because I would kind of defeat the purpose because I need the drivers to run the games that I would run want to run on Wine. So, uh, yeah. I'll probably get around to playing it on the Mac um, uh, sometime in the near future if I can pull myself away from Binding of Isaac for a while because uh, it is a very, very good game. Um I don't know if it's the kind of game that you can play for hours in a row. At least I can't because it's it's very boy. If you need an adrenaline rush, this will this this will wake you up. Um, very cool game. Uh, it's, it's dirt cheap too. I think I got it for less than two pounds on Steam. So fantastic deal for a really. It looks simple. It looks like an old game, but believe me, it is not. It is way more fast-paced. It just sort of looks like an old game. I don't think old games ever had this kind of frame rates. (laughs) So let's move on to the next one. Next game is Kerbal Space Program. Now, I've been actually playing this for a few years, but version one came out this year. 
and it finally came out of early access, but they're still doing updates to it, even though it's out of early access. So this is a game, again, this is an open-ended sandbox game. You create ships and you fly to the other planets in the Kerbin system. The Kerbals are these little bug-eyed green guys with uh, stupid smiles on their face, all too willing to jump into incredibly dangerous spacecraft and launch themselves into orbit. And it is a great game. I have, I don't know, up on nearly 500 hours on it. And I know there are people who have way more than that. So, um, yeah, I don't know what to say about it. You can build rocket ships and fly them into space and land them on other planets. And you'll probably explode a lot of them trying to do it. <laughs> so it's a very cool game, and I highly recommend it. And you may even learn something about orbital mechanics. It's not the most perfectly realistic uh, uh, physics, but they're close enough that you're going to get an appreciation of how difficult space travel can be. So give Kerbal Space Program a look-see. All right, next game is Super Win the Game. Again, this is not. This didn't come out in 2015. I think it came out in 2014 or even 2013. I'm not sure. Um, but it was incredibly difficult. I played most of it with my crappy old controller, but I finished the last, the last of it with uh, the Xbox 360 controller, which made things actually immensely easier. And even though people say the D-pad on the Xbox 360 controller is terrible, it's still way better than the one I had in my ancient Rumble Pad 2, which is a controller I've had for over 10 years. Um, and I actually had to use Q Joypad, which is like Joy to Key for Windows, which uh, turns your button presses on a controller into keyboard presses. Xbox 360 controller is fully supported, so I didn't have to mess around with any of that, and it's also a lot more accurate, so I was able to get through the end. Anyway, this is, um, you have, in this game, it's all platform. You have no offensive capabilities at all. You'll probably die a lot playing this game. The thing is, is you have infinite lives, which you will need. <laughs> Because this is some really, really rough platforming. Um, so, yeah, I would call this a platform puzzler because it does have a fair m number of sort of puzzle-ish type things. You know, you have to figure out how to get through the level uh, in one piece. Um, I didn't collect all the gems. I did finish the game, but I didn't collect all the gems. I didn't get all the achievements and all that. Um, I don't know if I'll go back and play this game. I might. With the new controller, it certainly, I have a feeling that it's going to be a lot easier game the second time through. I know there's a whole area that I didn't get through that's like an extra area that you can play. So I'm going to, I'll probably get around to playing this again. It's a really good game. If you like platforming, this is platforming heaven. It's got super precise controls, um, even with a crappy controller. Uh, it's very tight, very tight platforming controls. Uh, pretty much perfect. I can't fault it. In fact, other platformers feel sluggish and and, and sloppy compared to this. Um, so, yeah, super win the game. Awesome, awesome game. Oh, and as far as look, yes, it looks it looks exactly like a Nintendo NES game exactly like one it even has like a tv filter that's pretty convincing although i had to tone it down a bit because the smearing and stuff was made me a little bit nauseous um so yeah i give it a try um you might you may even want to turn off the filter entirely if it's not to your taste but it looks good it looks good it looks exactly like a nintendo game um, but it's got a story, and I'm not sure what the story is, uh, what's going on exactly. It's, it's something about dreams and stuff. I don't know. There's more to the story in the background uh, than, than meets the eye on this. It's not just saving the princess from the castle. Um, so, yeah, it's a very cool game. You might want to check it out. 
All right, and my last game here is Never Ending Nightmares. I absolutely adore this game. It's creepy as hell. I mean, it is really disturbing. It is a gory, disturbing horror game. It looks like a cartoon, very reminiscent of Edward Gorey's work. Um which I'm sure they did on purpose. And yeah, it's sort of a point and click adventure, except you do more sort of run and opening doors adventure. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. Um, there are multiple endings and multiple paths that you can go through. And each ending gives the meaning, it gives the game a slightly different meaning and what was happening. All of them are very sad endings, I have to say. Um, now, supposedly, the uh, creator uh, was inspired by his struggle with uh, depression making this, and, and I can see that. Um, Jack Septic Eye, a uh, popular YouTuber, was wondering if, if this is what it's like to... Uh, have depression. He was wondering if, if you saw these sort of hallucinations. You don't see the sort of hallucinations, but as far as capturing the feeling, yes, it does very much. And the game deals with depression and loss, and it's it's a really, really good game, and it's very much a horror game. But not just because it's gory, but because it's ultimately uh, it's ultimately about loss and tragedy. And for me, I think that's when horror is its best. Is when it's actually there's more to, to just shock. That what's behind it is real, real tragedy. It drives a lot of the most, uh, the strongest horror for me. Um, so yeah, I I would I highly recommend this game. It looks fantastic. Um, it's got some really cool like effects. They're, they look, they seem simple, but they're incredibly effective. Like the shadows all move, like they're all animated, like all the lines and stuff is sort of moving across each other, almost like crosshatched rivers of darkness. And it looks very, very cool. Um, so I, I highly recommend this game. It's, really creepy, really disturbing, and it's great. So that there is my top seven games. I didn't do top ten because I just didn't feel like doing three more games. <laughs> so there we go. Um, nobody's here to listen to this, so I'm just babbling to myself. Yep. But that is my top my uh, top uh, seven games I probably got cheap on sale or something in 2015. Um, if you watch this, please let me know. Um, and